Petrushka. Hey, 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 Trushka. Trushka, you come up. Put it down, Trushka. Up. Put it. Why, you, I'll break you. Yeah. We share, you and I. I'm as hungry as you are. Yes. Rotten thief. Anyone could survive out here alone. Yeah. He's here. The dog knew it. If only we'd been quick enough to follow him. How oh, he can survive is unbelievable to me. And everything that we fear, he enjoys. He's part of all this. When you're part of something, it becomes your friend. What do you think he is doing now? Oh, probably sitting comfortably in an old pepper's hut, waiting. Waiting? For what? For the inevitable end. You think he's given up? No. No, he will never give up. He enjoys the fight too much. Then what do you think he will do? Yeah, he will do what we are all doing. He will try to survive.
working in the mills at Radwig one year. But he couldn't stand that. Why? What was the problem? And the work was boring. Papa had youngsters, half his age he didn't respect, pushing him around. That's nice. When he was a boy, a man was judged by his strength, not by how many books he'd read. <laughs> so, one day he put two of the supervisors in the hospital <laughs> and went back to trapping. He couldn't still make a living at that, could he? Nah. He knew it was finished. But, what does a man do? when his world ceases to exist. Do you think he's still alive? Two months is a long time. Even the tigers couldn't survive this winter out there.
must be the old man's place. Bostyanovsky. Yes, that's me. I'm Cesar Malik. I've come from Kalvaros to hunt the tiger. Oh, that was my friend, Peter Chacon. Welcome. Glad to meet you. Well, you came a long way just to kill a tiger. Oh, we did not come to kill her. We came to take her alive for the zoo. Well, then you have a difficult profession. Well, that's what we do. You think you can catch a mouse? Well, by the looks of things, I'm sure I could do better than you. <laughs> <laughs> you must be cold. Would you like some hot soup? I just made it. Thank you. That smells good. There we are. Sit down, sit down. Oh, thank you. Ah, oh, just a moment. I have men and equipment outside. This is the place. You go to Sinkers. I'll join you there. You heard the man. Go down to Sinkers. I bet the store owner has a beautiful daughter. There are no beautiful women in these parts. How do you know that? I have been looking for 40 years. <laughs> huh. It was the first one I'd seen in my whole life. There used to be tigers all over these mountains. From the Usuri down to Pakal. But now if we find one a year, we're lucky. Well, it's been two months since the hunt. The tigers could be anywhere by now. If she is out there, we'll find her. You be careful out there, Peter. Don't you worry about it. We'll take good care of him. It's good to have someone along who knows his way. Well, he has an ulterior motive. You mean the old man? If we see him, we'll bring him back. I hope so. I remember I was hunting an old wolf oh, a few years ago. I think we would have caught him easy on the flat lines, but he was much too clever. Higher and higher he climbs into the mountains, where the air gets thin and the man tires quickly. There's something almost human about the way a wolf thinks. He knows a man's limitations, and hunting one is almost like competing with another man. In all my life, I'd never shot an animal except in self-defense. My reward is to see the wonder in children's faces at the zoo. In time, the zoos will build larger confines for these wild animals, just like their former homes. That's the work of tomorrow. As the day wore on, I found myself at the very tops of the mountains. I had never been in such a silent, lonely place. Even the wind sounded strange and foreboding. I began to feel uneasy, as if something were watching me. At first I thought it was the wolf, but it wasn't. It was a white tiger, one of the rarest creatures in the world. As a boy, I heard tales about these animals and about the men who had tried to hunt them and never returned. I'd never seen such a beautiful creature, and in a strange way, I felt myself lured towards her. for the tiger to have doubled back on me. And yet there she was, behind. All of a sudden, I felt that I was no longer the hunter, but the hunted. It was almost magical the way the tiger moved from rock to rock without me seeing her. As I continued onward, I began to think of the men who had hunted the tiger and never returned. In the distance, I suddenly heard the dogs barking and then silence. I knew the wolfhounds were no match for the tiger. 
You need smaller, faster dogs to hunt a big cat. As I cleared the ridge top, the tiger had disappeared. Only one of the dogs were left alive. As I went to his side, I knew the tiger was watching me, hidden in the rocks close by. For a moment, I hated her for what she had done. And then I realized that we were the trespassers. She was simply defending her last refuge from mankind. This was the tiger's way of saying the mountains belonged to her and to no one else. How long have you been hunting tigers? Hello, Max. Since you were a boy. Did you ever get hurt? He was clawed by a tiger in Radvik last summer. Didn't that make you lose your nerve? No. It just made the whole evening more interesting. <laughs> Leave the horses here! <laughs> 
was as if he were defending the tiger. He shot one of the hunters in the leg and disappeared into the forest. They were so mad. They would have shot him if they had seen him. Yeah, we must go after him. Now we tried to follow him, but he just disappeared. The hunters will return. God knows what will happen then. It will be months before they are ready for that. Did you get a good look at him? Just for a moment. He looked wild, like an animal. 